This area here uh, on the lake uh, Great Wannsee in the south of Berlin was the area where the most prominent people of Berlin uh, lived uh, since the second half of the 19th century. The first social stratification of the owners were the millionaires of Berlin, rich and educated at the same time. Mr. Malier, the first owner who erected this estate here, uh, was not very well educated. He made his fortune with tooth past. His uh, wife was a circus rider on horseback, but they were accepted because they had a lot of money. They wanted to have here on the Lake Great Wannsee an atmosphere like on Lake Garda in the north of Italy. And this house here uh, was constructed uh, in an Italian style. After the First World War, Marie sold this estate uh, to Minou, another industrialist, and with Minou the political history of this house starts. The political style of Minou was traditional conservative, but not uh, the Nazi style. He was in the board of the city of Berlin uh, to control the buying of coal and producing of gas and all this and he managed to put into his private pocket some 100,000 Reichsmarks. He was imprisoned and he sold his estate out of his jailhouse. The SS bought this house. There was an explicit order that uh, secret servicemen uh, should gather here uh, where they have the atmosphere of comrades and they have something to smoke and a good meal. And also Mercedes-Benz is here to take them to the Wannsee station and uh, at about 30 minutes they will be in the center of Berlin uh, at the high security main office. This was a normal everyday use. Also this house was used as a conference house when experts were invited to discuss a special problem. And the, what we now call the Wannsee Conference of January 20th, 1942, is one of the first conferences held in this house. As anti-Semitism was such a center point of the Nazi ideology, every party office and every state office uh, had its own Jewish expert. And they all were busy to organize anti-Jewish laws and uh, anti-Jewish attacks and all this. But in discussions with Hitler and uh, Himmler, the decision was already made that the SS, controlled by Heydrich, is the only organization to solve the youth question in an adequate way, that means with most radical methods. It was important for Heydrich that everybody knows that he is now in power and that everybody had to cooperate with him. So, what was the main task of the Wannsee Conference is that from that day on it was totally clear that only Heydrich is now in charge to solve the Jewish question. Out of the 15 participants of the Wannsee Conference, there were on the one hand the SS men uh, and on the other hand the civil participants. For example, the Reich Ministry of the Interior, Dr. Stuckert, the man who made all anti-Jewish laws and decrees, the man from the office of the Führer was there. Of course, Eichmann was invited because he was a Jewish expert of the Reich Security Main Office. He was a transportation expert. In the time, forced immigration was a goal of anti-Jewish policy. All what we learned um, uh, about the atmosphere of the conference, we learned by the Eichmann trial in Jerusalem. No other participant was really asked what happened there. Of course, Eichmann had the defense strategy to reduce his own role to only a little cock in the machinery. But he always was trying to give real explanation how this all worked. He described that during the breaks, when they had participants walking around and discussing, that they spoke very openly about uh, the killing that was going on in the East and about the different killing methods. That produced in Eichmann a feeling of innocence. He was saying, how could I doubt that is a, a good way to kill the Jews? 
when the popes of the Third Reich are discussing it in this way. When the Red Army conquered Berlin, for a short time, uh, Russian soldiers lived here in this estate. And then after the division of Berlin into the four sectors, this became the U.S. sector and uh, U.S. officers lived here. And then for a short time, it was an open house as a former SS position. Nobody was keeping for and everything was stolen in this house. And then it became a youth hostel. And in this situation, the house remained until the late 1980s. With the changing of a generation in Germany, the idea came up in you to make this a memorial site, to have it mainly as an educational center. And then this house uh, was opened in January uh, 1992 on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the Wannsee Conference. And now we can say we are working here for a decade. Eichmann was explaining that after the civil participants had left the conference, Heidrich gathered his SS men at a fireplace and ordered them to have a cognac and also Heidrich started to smoke. And uh, Eichmann said, I never have seen Heidrich and I've never have seen him drinking alcohol or smoking. He was really very nervous. He probably had expected some protest. Not protest of the style that uh, you, you cannot wipe out uh, European Jews and all this. Those invited would not protest about this. He expected a protest against his leading role. And in this respect he was successful. Inside the Nazi movement, the Nazi ideology, the Nazi regime, to be the one in charge to solve the US question, this was the top of his career. And if you sum it up, you can say it in the words as Mark Roseman did it in his famous book on the Wannsee Conference. It's a turning point from mass murder to systematic genocide.